Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and we're talking about the Tinker Gnome, the Inventor. This is the Rock Gnome. Uh, and of course there's only a little bit of information spelled out in the Player's Handbook. Xanathar's Guide to Everything gives you a lot more, which is great. And I've compiled a lot of information ask, asking people on Facebook and the internet what you can do with your Tinker Gnome. Now what I've tried to do is come up with ideas that you can use, that you can present to your Dungeon Master which aren't too outrageous, although I have sprinkled in a couple of ones that I know people will be wanting to ask somebody somewhere out there. So I have included those as well. Now the very first thing you will find when you look in the Player's Handbook is the discussion about making a clockwork toy, whether that be a dragon bird or whatever. That's your pretty st standard sort of uh, makeup. And of course, something like a music box is quite co common. Uh, those are the standards, you know, the things that you know you can do because it's actually in the player's handbook. But if you want to do more than that, you want to try and be a bit more creative and hopefully use something that's going to create a bit of utility, then this is where we're going with this. And that is what about a fire starter? Essentially a lighter. You know what a lighter is, you've used it, you've used it to start fires. There's no reason why you can't make one with your Tinker Gnome. And that sort of will alleviate the hassle of using your torch and your flint and tinder to try to um, start up your fire and get your torch going. Just have a little fire starter, a lighter essentially. A rabbit whistle quite handy if you want to call out to somebody and signal to them. So a rabbit whistle is something you could make. This one I think is more jest and that is the, the dumbbell shaker for exercising. Shake, 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 shake that dumbbell. Shake, shake, shake. Uh, everybody has to exercise so why not a shaking dumbbell that you can utilize in your game. What about a compass? Uh, shaped like a beetle. I selected the concept of a beetle rather than something else but you could have a compass that you could wear or have that is shaped like some sort of animal or creature gnomes are quite partial to to little animals and I don't mean to eat uh, um, although I'm sure some do but not all of them a sundial that you can wear on your wrist although no forget about that because it's not going to work is it if you wear the sundial on your wrist you change the position of the sundial, so that's not going to work, so forget about that one. What about a gyroscope? I don't know what you're going to do with um, a gyroscope, and well, we know what that is, it's sort of, it spins you around and you stay pretty much in the same position. Useful if you're creating some sort of vessel that's going to be going upside down, things like that. You might even find it useful as a, a giant wheel that you can sort of uh, sit yourself in, roll down the hill and instead of being tumbled head over heel you stay perfectly in line so you don't wind up getting really dizzy which is one of the worst parts of riding a giant ball or barrel. What about super useful a magnetic telescopic rod for picking up loose bits of metal and items that you drop into really hard to find locations. This is the one that I think is probably the most useful out of all of them. It's also one of the things I sell at work quite often too. We have a whole range of these things that people need to get into the engines and into locations to pull out little bits of metal and so forth. The clockwork mount or steed. Obviously wanting to have a steed that you can ride is very popular and that would be one thing you could use in your game if you wanted to. The clockwork familiar cat or owl. It could be something else. It could be, I don't know, a rodent of some kind, but a clockwork familiar. All of these are going to be really dependent on how nice or flexible your dungeon master is. It's not like these are a given. You know, you, 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 there is going to be some compromise and probably a few things you just won't get to, to make. An audio and visual recorder. Essentially what we're doing right now but just maybe a box or something like that that you can record sounds and visual um, 
the visual scene and then play it back on a recorder later on to show other people. It's very sort of Star Trek-ish, isn't it really? An alarm or an anti-theft device. So something that you can set up around your camp or on a door that will make a big noise and alert you when somebody is trying to either take something or sneak up on you. Super useful. A breathalyzer. So a breathalyzer, not as in to find out if somebody's been getting drunk, more a breathalyzer to detect poison or disease in the person. And maybe a breathalyzer is not the best way to do it through breath, maybe you do it through blood, something like that, something to detect uh, poison and disease. All of these, as I said, are contingent on your dungeon master allowing you to have these things made by your Tinker Gnome. What about anti-gravity boots, or essentially spider climbing boots, boots that allow you to walk up walls and along ceilings. A mechanical fan, so you can keep yourself cool. We all know that sometimes it gets very, very warm and keeping ourselves cool would be useful. So, you know, I've seen people with those little fans that they sort of uh, put in front of their face to keep themselves cool. I think, what is it, the celebrities often use those sorts of things, don't they? A glue gun for sticking things together. Why not? A glue gun would be one of the first choices I would go with, particularly when something's broken and you don't have a spell like mending. So. I'm not saying a hot glue gun, I'm just saying a glue gun for sticking things together. What about a chameleon cloaking device, something that you wear that makes you invisible? Now, or not invisible, but sort of helps you blend into the environment. I'm, I believe that there is a product like that already used by the military. Um, I don't know how easy it would be for a Tinker Gnome to fabricate, but it's a fantasy world, so anything's possible, right? What about a black, black light? Black light, not a tinny light, no, a black light to detect organic substances. Now, my understanding is that a black light's really good at picking up things like bacteria, um, feces, urine, and other body fluids and organic materials. So a black light would be useful, certainly if it sort of made things sort of glow a little bit when you shine them over a location. What about a lie detector? Something that you can hook up to somebody to detect if they have been lying to you. Why not? I think that's quite a good idea actually. I need one of those myself. What about night vision goggles? Night vision goggles, yes, we want those. For those individuals who have decided to select one of the few races that doesn't have dark vision, make them some night vision goggles. That, that way you don't have to worry about them walking around with a torch and giving away your location all of the time. A parachute. For those of you who don't have feather fall, a parachute, not really useful if you're falling from a very small distance, but if you're sm falling from a quite a long distance, then of course you don't have to worry about that 26 sided dice worth of falling damage you're gonna have to suffer. So why not a parachute? What about the oil slick boots? We know what they are, we know where they come from, the Goonies, was it Data? I believe it was Data. Data? Data? Something like that. He had the oil slick boots. Oil shoots out the back, makes it slippery behind him. Somebody walks on it, slips over, hurts themselves. It works for me. What about a net launcher for capturing your enemies rather than killing them? A tracking device in miniature form. That's like uh, little Spider-Man's little uh, uh, devices that he used to flick that looked like a spider that he'd done um, attached to somebody and he'd be able to track them down later on and then give him give him a good um, beating that sort of stuff yes sounds good um, what about the rebreather to allow you to breathe underwater when traveling a little bit like a James Bond rebreather who was it I think it was a, a Roger Moore movie that had the rebreather and probably also a oh who is he? Sean Connery. Sean Connery, Connery, I'm sure he used a rebreather at some point as well. I think that's not a bad idea either. A jetpack for allowing you to fly. This one's going to send out alarm bells to every single dungeon master who hears this. Being able to fly is a big deal. 
So if you find a dungeon master who does not like the idea of you making a jetpack, I can completely understand, and I wouldn't give them a hard, um, hard deal about it. But I did need to include it because I knew somebody would make the comment about what about a jetpack? What about lock picking devices? Things that you can use that don't require a lot of skill that you attach to a lock that does the picking for you. Or let's go all Batman and go with the grappling hook gun. Fire your gun, shoots out a grappling hook so you can hook onto the, the side of a, a tree, a wall, and then clamber over all Batman style. An airship for traveling long distances. Well, all short distances, it doesn't necessarily have to be long distances, but there's some sort of distances involved, right? An umbrella, simply an umbrella, so you can stay dry. You're in the wet, now you're not, you can stay dry. A pocket watch that tells the time, super easy. What about a mechanical multi-tool, a little bit like the Swiss Army knife, something that has a screwdriver, a spanner, knife, tweezers, toothpick, things like that. Things you might find useful. Scissors, scissors are always nice and useful, aren't they? Lots of things you can attach to something like that. A telescope or a spyglass, something that's already in the player's handbook. So being able to construct and build a spyglass, they're quite expensive, so I can understand a dungeon master saying, well, yeah, but you need to to save up the materials and I'm going to still require you to spend a bit of time to do that but still seems like a, a reasonable thing to try and make with your Tinker Gnome. Uh, one of my favorites has definitely got to be the the chainsaw. You decide that you want to level a few trees, create a bit of firewood, make a log cabin, get out the chainsaw and to start cutting trees down. An electric guitar, lute or harp for those of you who are musically inclined and would like to make some beautiful music. A bicycle or a gnomish vehicle. I like the idea of the bicycle myself. A mechanical engraver, something for engraving into metal so you can mark it with names or initials or something like that. The mechanical toothbrush so that you can keep your teeth clean rather than using a brush you get a mechanical brush that you've made yourself that you can use often. I know this does not sound super, super, super exciting. I realize that. I do, I do understand. What about a mechanical shaver for shaving off your mustache and beard? A flashlight that can be mounted to your head so you don't have to carry a torch anymore and you can go sort of all dwarfish like the, uh, the seven dwarves. It's like a mining light, I guess. A little bit like a mining light. What about... <clears throat> yes, I know people are going to say them. This is the things that I'm sure Dungeon Masters will have a lot more issue with. And that is bombs, explosives, guns and firearms. Yes, making those would be fun. But you're really pushing the envelope with a Dungeon Master when you start saying, Can I please make a homemade bomb, explosives, gun or firearm? If they say no, I can understand. Those things are quite powerful. And yes, Fireball is quite powerful too, but she, it's worth a try, I guess. But if they say no, I would just try something else. I've provided you with quite a few different uh, possibilities and options. It's not exhaustive. The list that I was um, shown was monstrous. It was huge, and I don't know that I could possibly talk about everything that anybody ever said. Some of them were in jest, some of them weren't. But essentially, the, the last two that I was talking about, the bombs and the firearms, really require a lot of um, leniency by the dungeon master. And it does mean that even if they do that, they're probably going to have to make the game more difficult for you anyway. So that's it. That's what I have for today. So if you found this video helpful or informative, please share and like the video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel and you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell button to be notified when I go live again. And also, um, I, I will publish new videos. I, I know people think, well, I don't do a lot of that, but I will. If you want to support my channel, watch more of my videos. And thank you for watching this video if you were watching this video. 
If you really want to support me, I don't do Patreon, but I do have affiliate links down in the description to the book depository and Amazon, where you buy stuff online, I get a small commission, you pay exactly the same price as you normally would, and uh, you just go through the link and then buy what you like. Now, if you want to have a chat with me, in the chat box right now is the time to be doing that. Otherwise, that's what the comment section is all about. If you want to have a chat with me and not in the chat because you're not part of the live stream, then uh, chatting with me now is probably the best thing you can possibly do before I leave. I will try to respond to everybody. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s.